everybody. It's Wednesday, and welcome back to Lando Live. I know it's been a little bit. I've been neglectful. I have abandoned you all. Um, really happy to be here. I have something kind of cool to show you. Um, I have with me Dan. Dan, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me, Alec. Um, I'm Dan Moore. I'm head of DevRel at FusionAuth, which is a uh, identity server. So something like Auth0 or Keycloak, but we, similar to Keycloak, actually let you self-host. So we're, uh, we play in that space. So thank you very much for having me and I'm excited to see what we're going to build. Yeah. Yeah. And so Dan reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and it was actually really good timing. Um, so I, for many years have helped a few of my clients work with third-party identity servers. Um, and uh, the main one that we've used is Auth0. Uh, and Auth0 is great. There's a lot of good things about the product. I think it's kind of, in my mind, it is a, you know, it's pretty popular. Um, I would almost call it a lingua franca of, of this type of service. Um, but I would definitely be remiss not to mention some of the downsides of using, using Auth0. Um, I think the biggest downside that I've noticed in recent years has been sort of regular growing pains of a startup. Uh, you know, Auth0 started out super dev focused, um, still have really good documentation, other stuff, you know, that's wonderful. Uh, but as they've grown, money talks uh, and they've had to make certain changes to their pricing models. Uh, and also, I think just to just their service levels to especially smaller <laughs> accounts uh, that's made it kind of difficult for some of my clients, particularly those that kind of fall in this sort of mid prize range. Uh, these smaller enterprises that may not have the budget to really take on a full enterprise contract at the size of uh, that Auth0 wants them to take on. Uh, so that's definitely soured some people. Some of my clients are like, why are we still doing this thing? This is painful. This is super painful. Um, so that sort of has led me to sort of poke around at alternatives. Uh, and when Dan reached out, it's like, yes, let's check out Fusion Auth because it is time to have some alternatives. Uh, and I, I, I'm happy to say from my exploration over kind of this last week or two uh, that there's some really interesting things about the service that I'm, I'm curious to explore. Um, so what I was hoping to do here and what I've poked around a little bit with, and we'll see how far we get um, and we'll see what blockers we find and what other interesting conversations we might be able to have. Uh, but I was able to do a little bit of exploration with using Fusion Auth with a pretty basic Lando Laravel app using uh, one of Fusion Auth's really helpful demo repos. So Fusion Auth has a great a collection um, of demo repos that you can find. And I'm just Googling it for this directly because I know it exists, but they have this Laravel with Fusion Auth example app. Um, this is a great starting point. Uh, one thing I, I, I did notice is it's a little dated, which is fine. Uh, you could apply this super easily to a modern, to, a, you know, to an up-to-date Laravel application. Um, it's kind of one of the things about Laravel that's great is it's, uh, it's always moving forward really quickly. And, uh, I think, uh, it's hard to keep up. I know, uh, our Lando repos haven't quite caught up with some of, uh, Laravel's recent, um, updates and things. So that is something I totally understand. Um, uh, but yeah, this totally works. Uh, the only thing actually I noticed that I had to do different, I'll show you, um, in going through kind of my, um, my coding here. But yeah, and I don't know, Dan, do you have wait, any- Wait, 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 I'm saying, Alec, are you saying that software has bugs? It, Yeah, right, yeah, Whoa. like uh, software has bugs? No, I mean, I'm not even saying it has bugs. I'm saying that software gets updated, yes, <laughs> which that's is, fair, that's fair. and open source, I feel like is a good thing, right? It's like, uh, it's painful when it's not, when Definitely. it's not updated. Um, but it's, yeah, it's always good to, um, and I, this is like, this is totally, this would be the pot calling the kettle black to be like, oh no, you haven't updated this for 16 months. <laughs> Cause I'm sure if we went to the Lando Laravel plugin, we'd see, you know, I think like we're using default PHP 7.4 or something. I can't remember. It's like, it's, yeah. it's behind for what Laravel should be. So I, I just want to say a couple of things about Auth0 and then we can kind of move on to yeah. actually showing code, right? Um, so I guess I would say that I really respect what Officer has done. They, I used them five or six years ago on a project and they really saw this enormous market opportunity of taking identity and having it be a service that people could use. And like you said, their documentation is fantastic. 
we have had people migrate from Azure to Fusion Auth because um, you know you kind of allude to the business thing, and they did get bought by a, a competitor. Um, I think it was in 2021. Um, but I think the most important thing to say is, um, or one of the ways we differentiate is we're smaller, more dev focused, and we are self-hostable or SaaS, right? Where Auth0 is pure SaaS. And so we have a lot of people come to us and say, well, we want to start with a, a downloadable version and then we'll move to your cloud or vice versa. And that's a flexibility that uh, something like Auth0 doesn't offer. And the uh, last thing I would say is the most important thing that I hope everyone takes from this video is don't roll your own, right? Use Auth0, use Fusion Auth, use another solution, use an open source library, but please don't roll your own off software unless you're an off software company. Um, there's just so many great options out there. So that's all I have to say about Auth0. So. Those are words of wisdom. Um, yeah, and like the, the on that kind of roll, uh, don't roll your own and the ability to, to host on your own infrastructure. I mean, this is huge. This is, uh, this is one of the things I feel like this kind of taken the dev tool space um, by storm over the last few years, you know, if you asked me back in like probably 2016, uh, if like why something like GitLab or something like that would be necessary, I would kind of be like, oh, like why GitHub is the thing. That's the one thing that's why would you need anything else besides that? But I feel like GitLab really paved the, the way for people that said, no, we're a large organization and we want to actually host this thing on our own infrastructure, maybe for compliance reasons, maybe for cost reasons, who knows? Um, this is really, you know, this is a huge trend. And I think if you have that need, then, uh, then, you know, you probably already know about fusion auth already. <laughs> you probably already evaluated it. Uh, one thing we'll do, so I'm going to do a really basic example first, but we are going to check out how to run fusion auth by itself alongside Lando. Um, I wish I had it running completely within Lando because then I would share a Lando file and you could just Lando start and have everything. I'm hoping I'll be able to do a, another video on that. I, I want to do a video on the Compose service within Lando. Um, and I have not had enough time to really, oops, to, um, I haven't had enough time to go into that. But you can check out the Compose service. This is a great way to make DIY, um, build your own kind of services with Lando, basically using the Docker Compose syntax. Um, and this should be a really easy way to take the Docker Compose file that Fusion Auth ships and make a service that just runs Fusion Auth. Uh, but anyway, well, I'll show you a little more about that and we can talk more about that later. First though, I'm gonna get this Fusion Auth example Lar Laravel app working um, locally. Uh, I won't lie, I did this before just cause I wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna completely blow up in my face um, while I'm doing a live stream. Um, so I do have this example somewhat pre-baked. Um, we'll see here. Let me blow up some, some of these screen sizes here for all and of this us. This is Alec, if I'm not in incorrect, this is you using a, uh, SAS version of fusion Auth that we've provided for you. Is that correct? Yeah. So I have, um, right now I have the app configured to use the SAS version. We're going to play around. This is the thing actually. So the fun part of this video is going to come after this. Um, I do have, I was able to successfully set up the local version of Fusion Off using just vanilla Docker Compose outside of Lando. And I'm kind of curious to see if we can actually network this app to work with that. Um, so we'll, we'll, that'll be kind of our next project. Um, Walk before we work, before we run, right? Yeah, right. Like, let's start with something a little less uh, wooly. So, but this is super basic. So all I did to get this app running um, I cloned down this example repo that Fusion Auth provides, Fusion Auth example Laravel. I ran Lando init. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this, obviously, but you know, I chose my current working directory because I already have the code, and I chose the Laravel example recipe um, that Lando provides. And I think like the only other thing you have to do, yeah, your web route is going to be public. Um, for this Laravel project, most Laravel projects, that's going to be the case because that's where your index.php lives. So that's kind of, you know, that's where things start getting served from. Um, but if you do those things, if you set up your app that way, it's going to generate a Lando file that looks like this. Um, 
And so super basic, you know, again, kind of just showing the power of Lando to give you a start state. And this is, you know, Dan, because you're not as familiar with Lando, basically all this is doing is just kind of giving you a, a, a boilerplate Docker Compose setup in the background, more or less. Like that's kind of what it's doing. It's doing all that work for you so you don't have to go find the Docker Compose setup for, for doing a Laravel project. What's the more then, right? Because you said more or less. I'm curious, like, what's the, what's the special sauce on top of Docker Compose? Yeah, and the other thing, so the special sauce really for Lando, um, which, you know, any Lando users out there, you're probably, this is why you probably use Lando, automatic setup of the networking and proxying. Um, so when we start up this app, which I should do now, hopefully I, I just uh, changed the Lando file, so hopefully I didn't bork something. That'd be fun. But, um, but yeah, so when we start up this app, we see that we get these nice URLs just out of the box. We don't have to worry about setting up our own proxy or anything like that. The other cool thing that we get, if I just run Lando here, get a list of commands, you'll notice there's a bunch of different uh, sort of like aliased commands for different utilities that are really important to use with Laravel. So I have the ability to run Artisan and Composer, um, within the Laravel, like all these different utilities that are super useful for developing Laravel, all these run within the containerized environment. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm actually impacting the file system that's there in the virtual uh, containerized environment. So you don't have to Google, how do I run Docker, Docker run dash I, all that stuff that like you typically have to do that I've always had to do whenever I want to go into a Docker container, it's all they're right for you proxy and awesome. That's great. Yeah. Cool. So it's, it's, you know, like it seems silly. Um, like sometimes I always think I'm like, why, you know, it's like, you know, it, all this stuff is available. All this stuff is very doable. I know people that run vanilla Docker setups for their companies and have just a cheat sheet or have, you know, a bunch of their own, um, scripts that they run to, to do this kind of stuff. But Lando kind of gives you a unified toolkit that you know is used by thousands of other developers every day um, to do this stuff. So that's it's just a nice starting place for that. Um, so yeah, so the uh, and this is cool too. I you know I don't actually remember. Does FusionAuth have a CLI tool? No, um, no, we have a, a couple of client libraries, mm -hmm. and basically I always drop down to REST uh, to curl, and then just running against REST. So yeah. uh, no CLI tool out of the box. That's a great idea. But. It would be, yeah. So that's like, and there's probably uh, one of the nice things about Lando's concept of tooling. Um, and you can watch one of my uh, older talks on tooling. I've given a couple um, at PHP meetups and things. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a, a link in the description of the video. But one of the nice things about Lando tooling is that you could create custom commands. So if you had like a really common, you know, if you had one thing that you, you're always curling for the REST API with Fusion Auth, you could actually alias that. Um, as a Lando tooling command. Um, Reset my password or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. Um, so, and eventually if you guys do create a CLI tool, then it'd be super easy to, to do that same, same thing with it and have all the power of that um, running within the container. Um, cool. So yeah, so that's kind of like the, you know, for all you out there that may be first time Lando users or new to Lando, check out, check out Lando tooling, definitely one of the big advantages to using Lando. Um, but yeah, let's, so I started up my app. Uh, we saw this, this little text here. Um, where's my boom shakalaka? I guess I only have a warning right now cause my, I'm ahead of the version of Docker desktop that Lando is officially supports good, good word to the wise. Lando is fine with using, uh, modern versions of, of Docker desktop. Um, so yes, yeah, so we get these nice URLs. Let's go look at our Laravel app and we'll see this login page. Um, I've already created a couple accounts, but let's let's register a new one just to see this works. Um, what basically all do you need to do to actually set this up to function? You're going to need to request a demo account from FusionAuth, um, and they'll provision one for you. Uh, so if you just go, yeah, you know, sign up, go through this, you'll get an email. They'll say, hey, here's your here's your creds for your um, for your cloud version of FusionAuth. Uh, they'll provision that for you. And then there's a couple of, of environmental variables that you'll need to put in. Um, I'm probably gonna skip that just, well, actually, you know what? Let's just take a look at that because I'm gonna delete this after this um, anyway. So you can hack my thing in the next five seconds and do something. I, I guess Dan will have to deal with that. Um, 
but all you have to do is just modify your .env file. That's actually one thing I want to really be really clear about. It, it's useful is when we spin up a Fusion Auth instance, it's actually a piece of separate virtual hardware, right? So it's a separate oh. database. It's a separate EC2 instance. Um, so yes, someone could conceivably take these secrets and hack your system, but like they're not going to affect any other Fusion Auth user ever. So anyway. And and my demo account is now open to the world. I'm I'm exposing my demo app everywhere. Um, as far as the API key, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this is all you need to really do. If you take the um, .env suggestions that are provided, I believe here in the readme, uh, they may be actually on the, the doc page. Maybe it... And I think some of these, um, I'm looking for that env. Well, maybe it's not there. I do know this is actually the other thing I noticed and maybe a note for um, for Dan and your team actually is just that mm -hmm. uh, I think that I didn't see on the repo um, the dot, uh, the default .env, um, an example .env, and I think it's referenced in the doc somewhere for this, um, yeah, like rename example.env to .env. I didn't actually see this in the repo, so that may have gotten moved or maybe it's just not in the root. I missed it or something. Um, but that may be something that you have to, that you have to search out, but really the thing that's important is getting in these, um, these three values and just making sure that those exist. And those are linked up to whatever fusion auth instance you're using. In our case, we're using my remote instance. So this is my dashboard for my remote trial instance. Um, hey Alec, real quick. Someone actually mentioned, uh, someone's here for the swag. I don't know whether you want to mention the. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. Tell us about the swag. I don't, I want to hear about the swag. Sure. So thank you all for, uh, attending this. Um, and we will at the end of the stream, uh, pick someone randomly. I'm not sure how Alex is going to do that. I'm going to put that on him, but that person can get a t-shirt shipped to them. So we have, um, a t-shirt and I don't know if you want to drop in the download link. I don't know whether I can. Alex. Yeah. Um, but Fusion Auth is, you know, what Alex walking through is like a trial version that will cost you money because we're running it, we're hosting it for you. But if you want to download and run it yourself, it is um, 100%. There's a community edition that is not crippled. There's just some advanced, fe advanced features that aren't included, but you can run that yourself. And we have people running, you know, that, uh, tens of thousands of users, maybe hundreds of thousands. They don't tell us uh with the community edition so you can build a big business we're using that as an idp if you're willing to run, host it yourself so anyway but the, the t-shirt if you scroll down i think you actually can see a picture of the t-shirt yes oh okay that's that's and, nice i like it and um one thing that's worth noting is yes you, you'll you'll see here that if you download fusion auth and you send us a screenshot we'll ship you a t-shirt but that is only good in the u.s and canada whereas the one that we're going to hand out at the, at the end of this, I don't know where your folks, uh, your audience is, but the one we're going to hand out at the end of this will ship any, anywhere in the world. So nice. I'm guessing, yeah. I, I know, I know where Dustin's at. Um, shout out all you, uh, your Ithaca, Ithaca is gorgeous, um, uh, folks out there, but, uh, but yeah, like I, I know that, uh, other folks may, uh, uh, be located elsewhere in the, uh, in the, in the world. So definitely stick around if you are not in the North America continent. Um, yeah, cool shirt. I like it. I may have to, may have to send a screenshot. Um, so if you have your NV set up, you should be connected to your remote is instance of fusion auth. Um, I'm kind of curious actually. So I've poked around a little bit in the dashboard here. A lot of these concepts made, um, oh, I'm going to, Get in here. Um, a lot of these concepts made sense to me just intuitively as a Auth0 um, user. Um, but I'm kind of curious, Dan, if you have kind of like a, a, I don't know, your five minute spiel on what's important here, um, how you use this dashboard, like what, what people really need to know to get started in the dashboard with Fusion Auth. Sure. Yeah, I can give that. Uh, so the users tab is a, is a great place to start. And I will say upfront, that our UX takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, the buttons that are next at the far right side of the um, 
users. Yeah, right there. The, that, that minute, that small black button is how you actually get into the user details. Uh, I can't screen. just click here. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, that selects them and allows you to do mass operations on it if you click on their email address. But if you click on manage, you can then see the different attributes of a user. And this screen is, is typically going to be kind of just used by your admins or your customer service reps, right? This is not something that you're going to expose to a normal user. Uh, there's a bunch of different attributes of the users that I'm not going to kind of go into each of these. Um, uh, one thing that's useful is you see the button on the upper right-hand side where it says edit user right there. If you click on the, the, um, the arrow, not the edit user, sorry, go back. You can see that there's multiple different options. And so you can pick each of those, right? And edit users probably can be a typical one, but this is a UX pattern we use repeatedly. And when I was starting out with Fusion Auth, I found that to be a little bit unintuitive. So I want to make sure that if anyone's kicking the tires on Fusion Auth, they can see that. Um, applications, do you want to go to the application screen real quick? Yeah. So this is basically anything you can log into. So this could be a custom app like Laravel test. It could be an office off the shelf solution that you want to just set up single sign on with. So like a Zendesk or a piece of forum software, anything that can support OIDC or SAML can be represented as an application. And so you basically have one central place. And I think Auth0 has a similar concept here of, of um, things you log into, but Auth0 breaks them out by like APIs and interactive applications and other things like that. Fusion Auth, it's an application, it's an application is an application, and you do configuration um, within the application to kind of determine, oh, is this a SAML app or is this an OAuth app, OIDC? But as far as Fusion Auth is concerned, they're, there's kind of one, one place. Um, and again, with the community edition, you can have unlimited applications. We actually, I know somebody who's running, um, I, I think they had, thousand applications or something like that it was it was thousands of applications and uh, again you can't run that on a box where you only have like 500 mega memory but if you scale things out and you provide sufficient resources fusion Auth is happy to uh, service as many applications as you want the last one i want to kind of hit up is tenants so if you click on tenants so i mentioned that fusion Auth, when you run in the cloud you get your own hardware right, right? well as much as you get your own hardware in any cloud provider, but you get your own hardware. Hmm. And what we've, what, we, what we've implemented is lightweight tenancy. So these tenants, you can add as many tenants as you want. We have people running thousands of tenants again, and they are separate, basically separate configuration user spaces. So we see this a lot with like a SaaS application where they want a private label, their SaaS, they'll have each customer come in and through the fusion Auth api you can actually automatically create a tenant when someone signs up and we've written a guide about that and this kind of lightweight tenancy where there's separation within fusion Auth in terms of the user so if dan logs in with um into tenant one the same identity uh you know my email address dan at fusion io you can log in with tenant one or tenant two, and they'll have totally separate passwords and not be connected on the fusion off side at all. So uh, that, that's really good for kind of the private label um, solution. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, wait, can we scroll down real quick um, to the systems area, system area? Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry, I want to do what, two, more, two more things. So let's go to settings real quick first and identity providers. Oh yeah. So one of the big wins with a system like Fusion Auth is that you, yeah, if you click on the um, the arrow up there. And I'm gonna, uh, and the, the only thing that's a little sad, I, I think uh, our, anyone on the video can see sort of the continuation of this. Let's like our faces are over a bit of this, but oh, I think yeah. you'll get the concept. Yeah, there. so we basically support a number of different identity providers and it really, we have good documentation and it's it's really simple to like add, I wanna sign with Google, Facebook, LinkedIn and an OIDC provider. And that's one thing I do wanna kind of, not to harp on 
the difference with Auth0, but like Auth0, I believe after a couple of different OIDC or SAML providers, they start to charge you. Here with Fusion Auth, with OIDC or SAML, it's, we have unlimited free ones. Um, if you do we'll use, want to use IDP initiated, we do charge for that one, uh, but it's kind of a flat fee, right? You pay and then you can have one or a million SAML IDP initiated at any providers, we don't really care. Uh, so we do, that just gives you kind of an idea of like how easy it is to add login with Apple, login with Facebook to your application. Um, and last one is gonna be the, if you go to the, uh, uh, under settings. Oh, sorry, system, system. I apologize. System. All the way at the bottom. Yep. And then go to event log. So there's no events right here because we haven't done a lot, but um, anytime you're you're doing an integration with Fusion Auth, whether it's with the, one of those other identity providers or with a SAML system, or even if you're just doing OAuth, you can turn on a debug switch. I can show you how to do that in the applications tab. And then we will log the basically the transaction or not, well, transaction is the wrong word. We will log the interaction. And then we find this to be really helpful for people debugging things because we'll say something like, we got this and we got, we tried to go to this URL and went 404. And when you're a developer trying to figure out how to make an integration work, this is the first place to go with Fusion Auth. So turn on debug and then go to the event log. Um, and by, by the way, I should mention that everything we saw here today absolutely can be configured via the API and via the client libraries that I mentioned. So just because you do it manually right now um, doesn't mean you can't put it into Terraform or a, a script to actually configure it in the future. Yeah, like one of the things I noticed that, um, that kind of stuck out to me, it might seem kind of like a silly thing, um, but one of the things that I've had frustrations with other <laughs> other <laughs> authentication providers that we've already named, so with Auth0, um, has been some limitations with their searching, uh, mm -hmm. specifically with user management search. Uh, and I know that there's, um, with Fusion Auth, you can toggle between either using your database service or Elasticsearch, right? Yeah, so we actually have, yeah, two different search services right now. And the database search is when you are, we have one person who runs this on a Raspberry Pi and we have people who run this on a kiosk. When you know that you're not going to be doing complex searches, then, and you don't want the operational overhead of running Elasticsearch, we get it. So you can turn it to database search. It's, it's a limited search. I'll be, I'll be frank, right? It lets you kind of does fuzzy matching on, a, on six or seven fields that are all documented. Uh, but if you want to search the um, user, uh, sorry, search in more complicated ways, uh, like looking at what applications a user's associated with, or there's actually a field called user.data, which is basically arbitrary JSON. So you can stick whatever you want hmm. in there. And we index that in Elasticsearch. And so you can do, you know, I, I wrote up an example app a while ago that said, you know, I'm going to store the user's preferences for a, a real estate application, right? It was like, I want to know, you know, I want homes between, you know, a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars, and you could actually search against the user database once you put that in the in the user data field. So you have the full power of Elasticsearch there, um, and I will. It's worth noting that when we when you use Elasticsearch we don't store any user data in Elasticsearch. We just store like, or how do I put this? We, we store what we need to in Elasticsearch, but the full, we're basically just storing IDs. Are you basically, sorry, I'm not explaining this very well. You will never interact, direct with, uh, interact directly with Elasticsearch. You will always go through the Fusion Auth API because that's what um, hydrates the user object, objects that get returned, be the best way to put that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's yeah. I think that people are fairly used to to that format. And I'm guessing, can you use um, the Elasticsearch syntax in the the search fields if you switch over to using the Elasticsearch service? Yeah, and actually, if you uh, click on Advanced real quick again, mm -hmm. ah, and then I got gotcha. you. Click on Show Elastic Query. Yeah. So if you actually choose, I don't know. Um, uh oh. Uh, if you choose application. 
we just pick an application from that drop down. Oh, maybe it's uh, maybe not dynamic right now. Uh, oh, I think you have to actually click search. So if you click on, um, you know, choose the application and oh, click okay. search. Gotcha. Okay, there you go. Then it, it, it blows it out for you, right? So, nice. um, and that's just a starting point. There are other examples in the docs on how to do things like ranges or other things like that. Very cool. Yeah, that's super handy. Um, so, yeah, so I guess like, uh, let's, uh, so let's do our, just our little quick example here. You could already see when we looked at our users that I had a few people registered underneath this app. Um, actually here, let's go to the app. You can actually choose if you go to the uh, users and search on the application of no, that's right. Yeah. Tests, you'll be able to look. We're already, that's why I'm not seeing those users because we weren't looking at the right app. Um, yeah, so we got Laravel test that's connected to our Lando running Laravel instance, and we're going to register a new person. I'm just going to do Alec plus Twitch Lando.dev. Um, and I'll put in some sort of bogus password here. <laughs> Okay, cool. Account has been created and we could verify that presumably if we do this again. Oh, here, let's filter down to our, so we see Alec plus Twitch, we just registered and we can log in as them as long as I remember my bogus password. Nice. And this is, a, you know, obviously this is a super simple um, Laravel application, I think it only has, you know, one view to show you your, your profile, your fusion auth user ID and, um, your email, whatnot, but you know, super simple example that shows you how this works. And I think, you know, if you, if you take a look at this code, you'd get a pretty good idea how you could extend that. If you're a Laravel developer to do all the fun things that you want to do. Um, so that's definitely the easiest way to get going is to, um, is to just, you know, have Fusion Auth do the lifting for you and host their service because they're, you guys are presumably pretty good at that, I'm guessing at this point. <laughs> um, we've, we, we've had a lot of practice, yeah. I would, yeah, I, I would hope so. Um, but if you're looking for something more complex, so the, the other thing you can do that, let's, let's take a quick look at. Um, and actually, I kind of want to do this, I guess I technically, I do have it already booted up so we can just go to my boring thing. But I do love, um, if you want to use Fusion Auth locally and run it yourself, the example for it, which you can actually find just on the docs page download, that download page that I put into the, the links. Let me click on my own link. Um, if you click on this Docker example here, this this little one-liner will get you going. Um, you, you, know, you can see it right now, you're downloading a Docker Compose file um, and you're getting it, and that's pretty much gonna give you everything that you need to get going. Um, but, and I will say we always encourage everybody to read the stuff they curl, right? right. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to please download it first and then read it before you execute it. We don't, we aren't doing anything nefarious. Um, so but I, I get a little peeve when people say, you know, curl through bash and then you don't, you don't know what's going on. So read, read, read the Docker compose file if you want. And you know what, let's actually, let's do that. Cause I thought, let's do, let's just go through that. Cause I haven't, I didn't use this one liner. I used a different, I think I used the doc page one liner, which let's, let's get it open the doc page too, just for, um, just for fun. Should forget, let's hear getting started installation guy. That's what I'm looking for. Installation methods, Docker. And this gives you a really complete rundown on what's going on here. Um, I recommend too, the, the, the compose file and the Docker files are pretty transparent. Um, if you're somewhat used to those things, we'll probably look a little bit more at those at, at the end of this video. Um, but for right now, let's just, let's get this thing running. Um, and you can see this is basically the, so this is basically the one-liner right here. Um, so yes, yeah, so we we're gonna run the one liner here, which is gonna give us the the necessary compose file, the env file, etc. And it's also just running the Docker compose command, and that's what we're looking at here. 
And this should mean, if, as long as the config is the same as everything else, that we probably have running on our local, we should have Fusion Auth running right here. Yeah, great. So we got the setup with it here. Um, and I'll just put in some stuff. Um, and we'll just put in whatever things we want here. Great, accept your license. We're gonna reject that for right now because it's a fake email. Ooh, fat fingered my password. There we go. And there we are. We're uh, pretty uh, pretty quick and easy um, to get that going. I mean, that was literally, how long was that? If I hadn't fat fingered that thing, I think that would have been less than a minute to run the one-liner <laughs> and get get in here. So we have a full, this is a full running Fusion Auth, same as the one that is running um, in the cloud right now that we've been using for our test example up to this point. Besides this one is running locally. So that's pretty cool. I, mean, I, I like that. Um, what I sort of, so we're sort of getting into the exploration. This is, we definitely covered, I think, pretty much everything I wanted to make sure we covered. And now we're entering into the here may be dragons uh, portion of the map. Uh, and I think pretty quickly I'm going to fall over the edge of the map is probably what's going to happen. Uh, but that could be kind of fun too. Cause I think there's a couple of things over the edge of the map that we can look at, even if we're not, um, from, even if we're not sailing completely as, as well as we'd like to be. Um, so I think what we can do from this point, we can try to network this, um, the, these locally running services. So we can try to switch out our Laravel demo app from using the cloud service to using this local version. Uh, I think we're gonna run into a networking problem really quick. Um, I think that's actually what's gonna stop us maybe from doing this, um, but we can, we can try. Um, what I really wanna do uh, and what I was poking at, but didn't get quite enough uh, time slash help from the Lando guru that is Mike Pirog um, to, uh, to complete is to use the Compose service that I mentioned at the beginning of this video to encapsulate the, the Docker Compose file that gets Fusion Auth running into an easy to use Lando file. So all you'd have to do is run Lando start to get a properly networked Laravel app connected with a local Fusion Auth um, instance. I think that should be super easy having looked at the Docker Compose file. I am just, I am not the right person necessarily to do that. So I'm gonna pick Mike's brain at some point. We're gonna do another video to show that. Um, but we can definitely take a look at some of those files and things. Um, yeah, so let's let's really quick, let's try uh, and probably fail to switch these things out. What I'm gonna do, and Dan, jump in at any point because you've done this probably 50 times um, and you'll you'll have fun probably watching me uh, make whatever mistakes people make. Um, yeah, so actually it should be as simple as switching out those end files, right? So we need to create an application that, like, right? Because you still have to have that test Laravel application because you don't have that here. Yeah. So. so let's do that. Let's create a new application. It should automatically generate ID. Great. And actually, if you go back real quick, I just want to make sure if you go back to the test Laravel application, can you edit it real quick? Yeah. And if you go to the OS screen, we're going to need to add a redirect URL. Let's see here. Which screen? The Oh, this one, this tab right here. Okay. So we are going to need to add, this is where actually let's turn on debug enabled right now, just because, and you wouldn't do that in production, but there's a little uh, toggle. Toggle. So debug enabled. Ah, there we go. Sweet, got that on. And then we need a, a redirect URL, right? And that's basically where we send people after they've successfully logged in. And I believe you had to have one previously so we should be able to just use that same one yeah what's the here? instance oh yeah that's good yeah good point cloud instance we're gonna go so we're on our cloud instance we're editing the test app and we're gonna look to see that's interesting there's actually no oh. i wonder if it's set in the um, okay 
Okay, cool. Well, then we, let's, let's skip that because <laughs> basically we're just mapping the same stuff, right? Like that's be. all we're trying to do. So great. Uh, let's save that off. Yeah, but we need to save the client ID and the client, client secret. Or maybe just the client ID actually. Client secret. Oh, actually, we don't need the client secret. I was wrong. Um, we do. We, this is using a kind of a different pattern than typical. So uh, let's just save the application and let's create an API key. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. I think we're already saved. And then API key. How do we create that? So go to settings. API and keys. Ah. Then API keys. And so, you know, for right now, let's just create an API key that is kind of a super API key, right? But like in a typical real world, you would definitely want to limit the endpoints to what you need to have access to. And you can do that at, through the H, each of the HTTP methods and each of the endpoints you can see right here, it's like, I don't know, 80 or something like that, that you can have that control of. And this again can be managed via an API as well. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's just copy that value and then save this API key off. Okay, and are these are all automatically enabled? Do I need to do anything if, with if, the if, permissions? If you don't select anything, it gets everything by default. Okay, that's so. good to know. Oh, it says that right here. <laughs> who reads? Who reads Doc? Who reads yeah, doc? you know. Oh, oh, I got a specify an ID here. Oh, did you put a space in there? Maybe. Yeah. If, okay. If you don't select any, if you don't put anything in there, it'll auto generate a UID for you. So. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah, you Let's might want to delete it. There we go. Yeah. Great. Cool. And now if you click on uh, the link over there, then you'll be able to copy it. You don't want to copy the ID. You want to copy the actual key value. Okay. Oh, is this the... No. Okay. And I will say it is something that other streamers that we've been on with um, have had issues. We, we aren't really designed for a stream, right, where you're doing everything in public. Uh, typically, you're not going to want your API key to be a public thing you're watching. Oh, of to course. Do your secret. So, and then let's change the base URL to localhost. Um, you'll probably want to use not HTTPS. Oh, good point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is the cert, is there like a self generated cert that's usually not trusted? Yeah, anymore? exactly. And most people run Fusion Auth through it, like, and we certainly do it at, at, in, in our cloud offering through a proxy. Uh huh. That, that takes care of the, the SSL stuff. You could do it if you wanted to with bare bones fusion off, but we don't usually do that. Okay. Well, let's see. We might, let's see here. I'm kind of curious actually, if we're going to need to try. Well, that login should fail, right? This one, because it doesn't exist. That user doesn't exist. Yeah, actually. Well, let's, let's test that first. I'm still, I'm, well, let's find out. Try one my Okay, cool. Let's try, let's try registering and see if the, it'll get into our new one. Let's try one of our existing names even. Oh, maybe something else is wrong. The thing I'm um, that I'm kind of concerned about is um, how does the Laravel app reach Fusion Auth? Yeah, because right now localhost for the the Laravel app isn't going to be um, localhost for our our host computer. I think that may. How be. do we how do we configure it to talk to? The, well, first of all, do you need to restart? The Laravel app. That's the other the thing. Internet. Yeah. So we, we, uh... But how can you refer to the host computer with Lando? That's like... the thing that I'm that. So usually what you'd be doing, um, let's see, let's go back to our example here. I think usually what you'd be doing is the same thing that you would be doing if you were running this as a, um, you know, if you were running everything with a single Docker compose file, which is you'd have a network that everything's yep. on. So you just be able to refer to fusion auth instead of saying localhost, this would be something probably like fusion auth, you know, would be yep. the name of the service, uh, not fushton auth, but um, <laughs> it'd be something like that. Um, and that's sort of actually what I was setting up. So I can kind of give folks a taste of what a Lando compose um, service setup looks like. So what this is, if you're not familiar with Lando files, um, it's, this is going to look very familiar if you're used to Docker Compose files, but um, what this says is we have these services running. Um, 
one thing to note is we're actually running more services than this. We have our Laravel app because we're using the Laravel recipe. It by default has a bunch of services that are basically prepackaged in that we can modify if we want to by modifying them here in the services array in our YAML file, but we don't have to. Um, they're just there uh, and they have default config that just works for the most part, unless you, you want to change something. Um, so what I've done is I've added two services on top of this. And this is kind of me translating, starting to translate the Fusion Auth Docker Compose file, which let's let's pull that up for reference. Um, I'm just gonna Docker Fusion Auth. If we look at that, we'll see. Um, let's see the yeah Fusion Auth containers. That's what I'm looking for. So this Fusion Auth, Fusion Auth containers has all their Docker stuff. And if we look in Docker Fusion Auth, we'll see the Docker Compose file. And you'll kind of notice, so, you know, very similar syntaxes here, right? You know, these are, these are things that are built, you know, Lando is more or less built on top of the concepts and the literal technology of Docker and Docker Compose. So there's a lot of uh, familiar things here. Um, but yeah, so it's very, sim you know, what we're trying to do is very similar. We're trying to run a database service, a Postgres service that Fusion Auth is going to use as its database. So that's our Auth DB here. Um, I think I named it that just because the names, I want to say the DB may actually be the, the, the service that's by default used by Laravel. So I didn't want to, you know, they want to overwrite that. Um, and then I have this Fusion Auth service that's type compose. So Postgres is something Lando knows about and can just spin up on its own. Uh, Fusion Auth's container is not something that Lando knows about right now. Um, so we have to use this compose service. And that's basically just a way for us to pass in um, Docker compose formatted options. Um, so we could actually have multiple services running underneath of this Fusion Auth type compose if we wanted to. We could be running our, our Postgres server and everything. We could basically, we could try copying in this entire um, everything that's in here and try running it that way. And that's um, where Elasticsearch, if you're using Elasticsearch locally, it would go, it'd be one of those other services, maybe, right? Unless you have your own type of Elasticsearch that is available too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted to, to run Elasticsearch, you would just do something. Yeah. Like, you know, auth elastic and then yeah, type gotcha. Elasticsearch whatever sure. you know whatever like I said, what's the plural of services like <laughs> on line 12 because it seems like you only have one image do you run multiple images yeah you could run um if you wanted to have more services i believe you could um Maybe like an array or something like that yeah it's actually that's actually a good question maybe it is like uh, maybe this is limited to uh, let's look let's actually take a quick look at our documentation um and this is definitely quickly where my experience starts to run out is, is this area, but, um, yeah. And actually the thing that we might want to look at is, yeah, I feel like the services is, yeah, maybe, um, maybe you are limited to just a single service within, within a single compose, um, within a single compose, which sort of makes sense because Lando. Yeah, you would just create another top level thing, right? If you needed yeah, an email server or something like that. Yeah, like if you if you wanted to run, yeah, if you wanted to run like a custom version of Elasticsearch that, that Lando doesn't have as a, as a kind of a pre-baked service, I think you would do something like Elasticsearch, you know, type compose. And then image, sure. whatever, Fusion Auth, Elasticsearch, say you had your own like version. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I think that's what you would you would probably do. Um, the biggest thing that I am ignorant about, so you know, we could run we could run this version of the Lando file right now. Everything would spin up. It would be kind of it'd be like, yay, that something. I something's do see working. one thing. I do see one thing right there. That's an issue. Is you're gonna want the database URL to be auth dash db, not db. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's a, and there's going to be, this is where, um, this is where there's going to be like, yeah, there's going to be a lot. This is like kind of me messing around a little bit. Um, but, uh, and you know, there's going to be other things like the fusion Auth app URL. Um, this is not, this is not correct. Um, but really? uh, that's, not, that's not how it internally can refer to itself. 
it's not going to be given the name Fusion Off. I'm I'm not convinced that that's I don't know. Actually, that could be true because that is the name of our service. Um, I just don't know how your service na- maps names to network names. And maybe it's it's not going to yeah that it's not the 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 network names as far as I know are just literally the service names. So I think that's mm-hmm. correct. I'm just not convinced. Yeah, I'd I'd be curious to see what the um what this actually needs to translate to. Um, what do you mean? What this actually needs to translate to? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I'm confu- I'm I'm not sure. So this is the this is Fusion Auth. This is us telling Fusion Auth what its URL should be, right? Mm-hmm. So it can correctly show you in the interface and things like, oh, this is you know this is what the this endpoint should look like or this endpoint should be like. What is this actually used for? Yeah, it's a good question. So that's basically. Um, I'd have to double check the docs to be absolutely sure, but I'm pretty sure it is kind of what FusionAuth uses to, actually, let me double check the docs because I don't want to don't want to give you a wrong info. Um, reference, where is that? What are you? So the, So this is uh, so it's really only used internally. It's used to communicate with other, other nodes because you can run n nodes of Fusion Auth. Since we're only running one, it probably doesn't matter very much what the value is. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But um, yeah, I think the value that that really I'd be curious about is which I I think would be I think this should something like this should work for the value that we give for our. Um, our, our ENV file, right? It's like, so maybe, you know, something like that, right? Would be, um, would, would be, so just like, what's the, yeah, what's the accessible? Um, well, before we do that, which I'd really love to try, but I actually dropped in the chat um, what I have found is Docker's, like, how do I talk to the host machine? And that's, that's, because you're mapping port 9011 on the Docker image fusion off to the host machines Docker image. That should work if we use that host.docker.internal. At least I think it's worth it worth a try. Let's try it, yeah. And let's also try, let's see here. That should be okay. Um, let's try just a really quick. I'm gonna run a rebuild just to make sure that we're, I don't think we need to run a rebuild, but that's okay. That's just to pick up the ENV file? Maybe. Yeah, just to make sure that we're picking that up. Sure. I feel like that's the, the most steadfast way. What And what Atlanta Rebuild does is it's basically just, you know, it's killing your services. It's going to, um, and it's going to run back through. Orlando has a concept of build steps. Um, so in this case, like the, the one that you're, one of the ones you're seeing here is it installing Composer and making sure that, you know, running Composer install, doing that kind of set up those types of setup tasks. And those might vary depending on your application. They're customizable. A lot of people, you know, will do different things there to, to get their application into a running state. Um, but okay, let's check this out and see if that makes any difference. Oh, let's, let's do our unsecure version. Um, try register. Aha, uh-huh, okay. Let's go check it out and make sure it went to the local fusion. Yeah, office. let's try that. Yeah. Good call. Oh, Dan. Dan, he hooked us up. That was a good I still want I still want to see it like integrate with Lando. I think that would be an even easier solution, right? Than rather rather than Docker Compose and Lando um, for Fusion Off. Yeah, okay. I definitely yeah. want to try to figure that out. Um and we can kind of, let's see here. Actually, hmm. Well, why don't why don't we poke at it a little bit while yeah. we're here? This may I, be. I got time. You got time. I got I, yeah right yeah I, I got some. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's why we're here. Um, and obviously, anyone that is watching this video, this may be your bail point, <laughs> where Dan and Alec are just messing around. But um, I do promise, if we if we get this to work, or if we don't. Uh, either way, regardless, I will do a follow-up video because uh, this is one of the things that 
we just don't have our docs are okay-ish on the compose service um but really it's kind of just there as a hey if you know this syntax this is probably useful for you um this is the fun part <laughs> yes aaron that's right agreed agreed <laughs> like where where you don't where it's not a demo right where you're like hey how are they going to debug that that's where i learned a lot from people so this is where point. i learn stuff so <laughs> um, that's we're already seeing which is always good um but yeah yeah the, the we'll, we'll definitely do a follow-up video um i'll do a follow-up video on the compose service in particular and that follow-up video may very well be um the continuation or a summary of what we're about to do, which is, hey, let's take a Docker Compose file um, from FusionAuth and let's make that into something that just runs in a Lando file. Because um, this is super, there's a lot of people that ask questions on the Lando Slack. Shout out to the Lando Slack, by the way. I know the folks on the, the chat right now came from Lando Slack. There's over 2000 people there. Um, the coolest thing I see on there is users helping users. Um, and I'm sure actually, Dan, do you guys have a, a, a Slack for Fusion Auth or some, somewhere else for live chat? Yeah. So we have a Slack and we also have a forum. The forum's a little more active than the Slack. Okay. But, uh, yeah, either way. So definitely if you have questions about Fusion Auth or Fusion Auth Orlando, I would say go to the community section of the Fusion Auth website and go to the forum and post there. That'd probably be the best place. Nice. I'm going to assume that's in developers forum. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, check out the, the forum, I guess. But yeah, that's the, I, I am guessing this is the same for you, Dan. Like the coolest thing I see on our Slack and hopefully it's the same way on your forum is just like, hey, who are these people helping other people? You know, a lot of times it's people I don't know helping other people I don't know. Uh, and that's awesome. Uh, that's community. Definitely. But uh, but yeah, so let's, yeah, let's, let's play around this a little bit. Let's see if we can get something sort of working here. Um, so... What I was doing uh, previously was, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just basically re-copy this over. Um, I had taken my work, copied it over. I'm gonna replace our Lando file with this. Um, okay, so we have a Postgres DB set up. We have Fusion Auth um, pulling from this Fusion Auth app image. Um, we have a command. So this is this is one of the places where this is supposed to be the entry point command. And the reason why Lando has an explicit command um, value that you need to input, to my knowledge, is that Lando runs a couple of commands, I, I believe, to get networking and other things set up. Mm. And it needs to know basically what are the command, what are the commands potentially that I need to run after doing that stuff. Um, and this is oftentimes like your entry point um, on your Docker Compose file. Um, so I'm curious to see because that's I'm curious to see. I know this. I know this starts. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if we go into this container to see if Fusion Auth is actually running. Um, that's what I'm kind of curious to see. Yeah. Um, does Lando have like provisions to like run like show me the logs of a particular Docker container? Is that? Part yeah, yeah, right exactly. Like, awesome. So we should be able to see when we start this up, we'll be able to see, um, you know, if this command just fell on its face or something. Awesome. Um, the other things we have going on here, let's see here. So this potentially might work. I The thing I don't know, actually, and the thing we might need to specify, we might want to lock down the port um, on our, well, that's actually... I'm kind of curious to see because I believe like the one of the things we might be able to do. I'm wondering if we might be able to refer. We might not need the port um, if we're referring to to this directly. I'm kind of curious to see about that. Sure. Um, and then yeah, the Fusion Auth app URL. I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm definitely interested in that to see if that's. It sounds like that may not even impact our our immediate test though. Yeah, um, I agree. But yeah, let's check this. Let's just see actually if this uh, this is even able to start up Fusion Auth. Yeah. So I'm going to run a rebuild because I've modified the Lando file and there's new images and things that may need to get pulled or just started up. I've already pulled them yesterday, so it should be pretty quick actually. Great. So it's creating the app server. Now it's just going through the build process for the, the Laravel app. Creating 
Okay, so it created the Fusion Auth 1, created the Auth DB. It's waiting for the database services to spin up. Cool, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a Lando logs and this S flag allows me to specify the, um, the container. And we're gonna look and see, okay, cool. So interesting. So there's a, we have permission denied. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that FusionNet does at setup is we always kind of carry, carry our own Java with us. So we, uh, if we don't see Java, we, I believe we just kind of set it up ourselves, which shouldn't be an issue with with the Docker container because that should just ship with the Java runtime. Yeah. Uh, huh. So maybe we don't want to run Kelly on SH run. What's the run command for the Fusion on Docker file? Is that what you where you grabbed that from? That's where I thought I got it from. Let's let's take a look though, because maybe I grabbed the wrong thing. Da -da -da. Okay, so the Fusion Auth Docker file, I believe, is in this Fusion Auth app Docker file. Yeah, there we go. Crank up the text size a bit if we can do that. Um, don't want to run connects there. This is yeah. So I got it from the command. Um, so the only thing I might suggest is is that end Fusion Auth use global Java. And those Java homes and those the, those three env, env variables above mm -hmm. are probably things that you want to have set because that tells Fusion Auth, hey, don't try to install Java. I believe it's what that first one does. Okay, gotcha. So I don't know how you set env files in Lando, well, but that's what I want to do. I mean, shouldn't hmm. shouldn't those already be? I mean, like we're. Oh, you're saying that we're, we're pulling the Fusion Auth image. Why yeah. would those not be set already? Yeah, ah, exactly. Good point. Good point. Um, do you have to run a, that command? We can try without it. Let's see here. Let's let's look too at the let's look at the documentation around send a command. Difference. Okay, so by default, Lando will hijack Docker container's entry point. It sets its own entry point. You need to remove that entry point and set it first as argument in the command. Um, let's try running without it. <laughs> sure. Let's see if, what the difference is. Run another rebuild here. I can get my text size even more. <laughs> that's a good one Aaron sleeping <laughs> and uh, B Martinez 28 asked if there's a forum for future webinar subjects which I think it'd probably be a yeah well one thing I would say so if you want to see past videos where you can see me goofing around more or less solo on on similar -ish things a lot of times actually on more basic subjects honestly so maybe not as fun um, but definitely check out the YouTube channel there's a large variety of, of videos there um and then uh for future stuff sign up for the the lando newsletter um there's links on uh, all around the the main lando website um so you just go to lando.dev you should see it I think in the you know towards the bottom of the page there's going to be some signups there um pay attention to lando slack <clears throat> you know if we're doing live streams that's oftentimes where we'll announce that we try to send um out uh, the recorded versions of videos to the newsletter kind of after the fact. Um, but a lot of times for our streams like this, we're not um, doing that ahead of time. Uh, we're just sending out some tweets. You follow us, Dev with Lando um, on Twitter. Um, follow us on Twitch because that's where we're going to be, where we're currently live streaming and where you can uh, get alerts from us there as well. Uh, so streaming tends to be a little more off the cuff oftentimes. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're following us on all the socials, 
Uh, and if you're on the newsletter, you're probably going to find out at least after the fact and be able to watch the video. Um, and hopefully if you're on the socials, you'll get the Twitch notification or the tweet or you're, you'll see it in the Slack channel. Uh, okay, so let's land our Lando logs command. Let's see if that did anything different. Okay, cool. So we got something slightly different here. Um, running command is fusion auth. Okay, so this is, I believe what this is saying is uh, I have a, um, one of the things that is in our compose service docs is this, um, this choosing the user section here. And maybe Dan, actually, this might be a place where your knowledge of the Fusion Auth um, Docker setup might come in handy. So most non lanol containers do not run as the root user by default. Um, the way there's kind of a switch off that you can do um, to, uh, to switch to a different user after Lando does its things as root. Um, through this environmental variable, the Lando drop user variable. And I am using that right now. I'm switching to the user fusion off because I saw that as the user, uh, yeah, this user fusion off. Um, yep. So I was assuming that that's what was needed probably for, uh, for fusion off, but maybe that's tripping things up. Um, and wait, what was the logs again? Yeah, here it says I see option requires. Well, let's let's try running as root, right? Which we probably shouldn't do. But what happens if we? Well, let's try it. Well, yeah, man, let's give it a go. I think this gives you a good taste for you know this is. <laughs> I feel like this is my experience back when I used to do more things in general um, with Docker and with Lando. It's like, okay, doing it again. <laughs> Building, build it in thing again. Lots of recycling. Okay. Oh, and that time it actually says that the, um, oh, interesting. Using the following keys. Yeah, so that's this is like part of the the permissions. It's trying to insert your SSH keys um, <clears throat> into the container in case you need to use those, which is a cool thing. Um, I do actually know right now if you're an M1 user, there is kind of an issue with the sharing of SSH keys, I believe, um, which I am. And if you're using, I should say, if you're an M1 user using Docker Desktop's optional um, Virtua FS file system, um, that there can be an issue there. But uh, but anyway, side note. Uh, but yeah, we're still getting to this this same point. So Lando handing off to. Uh, if you run it again, it's 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 done. It's not doing anything for you right now. It looks the logs, the logs file. Yeah, let's see. Here. It's just kind of stop. It, I mean, I just don't know whether it. Yeah, and we can follow them. I think gotcha. it's just flag of. Yeah. Okay, so there's our exit. Oh, that's interesting. Why are we getting something? Um. That's interesting. Is our oh, this is the app server. Oh, because it's okay. I see what's going on. Um, let me actually see what the follow command looks like for. Oh, looks like our database started up. Okay, that's good. Um, it is flag as a flag f. Okay. Is there going to be a collision between the Postgres database that the app is using and the Postgres database that FusionAuth is using? Uh, no, there shouldn't be. Um, I think actually this app uses MariaDB oh, um, as the. That's even better. Yeah, so I think that should be okay. Okay, yeah. And so just. Uh, and it, apparently it was interesting to see when we were looking at these other services, the Lando handing off to command, let's see if I can see where that was. Um, I think it was on our app service, if I can find that output. But it looks like the Lando handing off to is actually referring to the entry, yeah, it's the entry point commands. Um, gotcha. So that's like, this is an example from the app server. Um, so that's interesting. 
Well, let's set, let, I mean, it sounds like you've convinced me that the command is needed. So let's uh, look at, let's um, add that back in. Yeah, let's check that out. Let's, uh, so I'm gonna steal the, the command here. And it looked like we were getting a permissions error from that, uh, which maybe we've resolved by just running everything as root, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, for a local environment, that's not, especially when you're doing a live stream, that's not like a, a big issue, right? Like, obviously production is different, but. Okay. Let's try that. I think that was what we had. And side note, if you're seeing like this, this weird named Lando proxy Hyperion 5000 Gandalf edition, if you're someone watching this video and you've seen that with, uh, with Lando before and you're like, what is that? That's just the the proxy container. It's a traffic container. That that's what gives you all the nice URLs that magically link up everything to your app in Lando. Um, so that's what that is. It's not some crazy thing it just happened on your computer. Okay, so our service started up this time. We didn't get an error on that. Um, let's see what. Oh, okay. So I think we got we got past the permission error but we have too small maximum heap. So maybe we just need a, um, maybe one of these memory settings that we're setting. Yeah. Um, so where's the memory setting? In, does Lando impose any memory limits? That's a really good question that I don't know the answer to. I don't think so. Um, I would think actually, I mean like what is, it's been a long time since I did anything with Java. Um, does Java have like a, a heap size setting? Um, I want to look at something real quick. I guess this would be like, oh. is that a JVM thing or is that a Tomcat thing? It's a JVM thing, but that 512 should be fine. Um, and do you, in this setting, like the Fusion Op app memory, that would set it to the, the heap size to 512? Actually, I think we need it to be 512M. M. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's like 512 <laughs> like kilobytes. Yeah, it could be. It's like, ah, I don't have any room to do anything. Um, okay, cool. Let's try that. Maybe while we do that, I'll, I'll look at this Google Oracle. Um, just to see what's out there. Nah. I guess I'll just look at it. set. Still starting up. Setting Java heap size. Google knew what I wanted. It gave you the uh, same error. Sorry. Sorry, what? Did it give the same error, or are you still just kind of? Uh, it was still starting up. Let's let's see what it says. Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah. One character, the difference a character can make. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Aaron, you do need a command to keep the container running. Use the sleep infinity to keep it up. Ah, gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. This is what I get for not reading comments. Java sure had so say start a command for my Ah uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> the Minecraft server. Yep. That's funny. Awesome. Uh, Aaron was mentioning the, the Minecraft, uh, yeah, like having a similar issue with his Minecraft server and that sure enough, that was one of the things I think I saw in my Google searches. There was Minecraft. That's awesome. Um, how, how kids learn programming these days, Minecraft. Um, okay, cool. So we actually have a running service here. Um, I'm kind of curious actually to see. I don't actually know. The other thing I'm curious about is there should be a way to create a, a app server URL for this, for fusion off. Um, and like that, I have no idea how to do. Um, Wait, so did you just load up fusion off or can you load up fusion off running in Docker right now? Like, I, is, can, can you get access to it? Like, or is it not exposed? 
it's not exposed. I think that's the issue. Um, mm. I'm actually kind of curious to see. Let, let's look at my Docker um, desktop really quick. Um, do I not have Docker desktop running? Like, where is it? What am I running everything on Colima right now? That doesn't seem right. Now I'm very curious. You get this nice picture of like my my family and the 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 mountains though. So it's your oh, moment beautiful. of zen for the oops, wrong thing. Where is well Docker doesn't love us. Um I'm actually very curious because <laughs> um I have recently was messing around with Colima, uh, which for folks that that are not um that haven't played with that is a uh, is an alternative basically to the virtual machine that Docker Desktop creates. Um, it uses, I believe, it uses the Docker Community Edition, like open source um, uh, tool. Other than that, but it's basically like a drop in replacement for Docker Desktop and um, what what it, what it's doing. Um, so it's a if you want to move away from from Docker as your provider, particularly with the licensing terms that Docker Desktop now has, um, Colima is something to check out. Uh, there's definitely interesting things we're going to be doing with that, I'm, I'm sure, um, in Lando shortly. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's let's see if we can actually access this darn thing. Um, trying to think like the best way to look at this. I think what we may want to take a look at. Lando, um, Lando proxy docs and see, cause I don't, okay. This is what we need to do. Add in a proxy, which basically maps between the fusion auth host and the external one that Lando creates in the network. Exactly. I think this is, yeah. So yeah. So you can see here, like this is an example setting up a mail hog service. Um, which is pre-baked Lando, but I think the same concept will be true. Um, and there's just a proxy entry for that service. So if we do the same type of thing. We go in here and we'll just create below all this mess of all of our wonderful environmental variables and stuff. We're going to create a proxy and we're going to say fusion auth because that's the name of our service. And then what was the other? Okay, and then just it's an array of, of places where it should be accessible. Um, and what are our, I'm gonna follow the URL pattern that it's automatically generating for the rest of our app here. So I'm gonna say something like this. I'm gonna say, like if you're not service, let's try that. Sure. Um, or actually, well, it doesn't yeah, matter whatever. what it is, right? Yeah. Doesn't okay. Let's try rebuilding with that and just see if that magically works. I'm trying, actually, let's read so, the docs. Just, just so I understand what you're doing. Basically, you're saying like, if this works, when we go to fusionauth-lando-service. Whatever that URL was, colon 9011, we'll actually be going into the fusionauth Docker container via the browser. Is that what we're trying to do? Well, I, be I believe this should, um, this proxy, uh, sorry, maybe repeat that. Maybe I didn't. Completely yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure I understand what we're doing. Which so right now on line twenty nine, FusionAuth mm -hmm. is the 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 network name of the internal network uh, of Docker for the FusionAuth container, right? That's I think that so. Yeah. Okay. That's. And I'm then, but, curious to see if we need to specify that because this is a composed service. I'm not sure exactly how that should operate. I think I know, like you know, as you can see from like this this uh, example, if we were using like pre baked. Um, pre-baked service. I think we could just refer to it. It'd be the service name, but it may be different with its with, because it's composed. Is what you're saying? I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my only my my hesitation is like I I know that on the composed services you can set a a network key. Mm -hmm. But oh, and we have more. Aaron might might know. Uh, put the colon port in the proxy definition. I okay. Mean. Okay. Good tip. Good tip. Or route port uh otherwise it's just going to default route port 80 gotcha okay good call 
and it's probably serving from uh, if it's yeah because we're already we've defined that okay nice is that the right place to put it or should we put it in a key name in on line 29 i, I don't know i don't think so because i think this is okay. uh referring directly to the um yeah to the okay yeah it actually looks like on the in the docs it is in the key in, on line 30 not um cool okay thanks aaron that's the spot Aaron knows all my spots. Um, <laughs> cool. Let's see here. Let's try this out. Anyone that's that's watching this later, um, Aaron, who's been helping on the chat, does some great presentations on Lando, um, mostly at, at Drupal camps um, is where I've seen, seen you talk, Aaron, and you do a wonderful job. Um, but I, I'm sure you've probably spoken at, at other things beyond the Drupalverse at this point as well, too. Um, so definitely check out uh, his videos if you just look for Aaron Felity and uh, you know look around for and put in Lando. I'm guessing you'll probably come up with some YouTube videos that are they're pretty good. Services are ready. So it should actually show up in that list of services that, that get published, right? Now? Yeah. So well, it already shows up in the list of services published, but then it should show up in our lists of URLs. Um, gotcha. And it's probably I'm kind of curious because if it hangs on this a long time, it may just be that it's having trouble seeing that there's a 200 response from that. Um, sure. So we'll see. It looked like it it might take a little while. I, I, it's been a while since I've ran any Java things, but I remember sometimes it takes a little while for things to start up. Um, so I'm curious too. I'm kind of want to scan through these docs while we're waiting. Yeah. See if there's anything else that maybe I'm missing. Although I feel be better with uh with Aaron. Container of the URL you just created is now is okay. Cool. Good tip, Aaron. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So something went wrong. We did get our. Um, and, and sure enough, as Aaron mentioned, uh, just because we specified the port here, nine, uh, 9011, we're not, that, that, that just helps route to port 80. So it's getting served on port 80 here. Um, but yeah, bad gateway error. So let's, let's take a look at our logs really quick, just to see if there's something that, that might give us indications on, cause this looks okay. Oh, failed to start connector. What's that? Um, can you scroll up and let's look at the error message there? Oh, uh, yeah, we got a stack trace. Okay. Welcome back to Java. Uh, can, you can you scroll down real quick, actually? And the class name is uh, Cause by. Configuration file. Okay, oh. so, so we, for some reason, don't have that. So can we SSH into the yeah. um, container and see where that is? Let's do that. It could be because we're mounting that volume and we might need to, I'm not sure how you do mounted volumes in Lando, but yeah, we, that's probably it that we need to, um, that we haven't transferred that over. Where is that string? I thought it was at the end here, but, ah, oh, there we go. Configuration file. Okay. Okay, it looks like it should be like in user local fusion auth or something. It's usual, yeah, use local fusion auth uh, config. And the, the weird thing is uh -huh. we aren't actually using that at all because we're defining everything via configuration files, but it still expects to, to find, to, it checks there. Interesting. It kind of gathers all the config from the file and from the environment variables together. Um, let's take a quick look. So yeah, so I think, because I remember, yeah, okay. So we I was trying to, mount over fa config but we um because i think this should create the so let's let's not mount let's let's not do that volume and see what happens that's what i'd say because we don't need it and so i'm saying i think there might be an issue where it's 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 trying to mount that volume and then to the local directory and we don't actually have that let's try it yeah and if it um i'm also wondering if we don't because isn't we don't have a directory called fusion auth locally because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to mount 
it, it's expecting to have a local config file on right. my host machine. Config. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if that may be, that may be our next step is just, we need to create that, um, and get the correct config file in there. Although well, we do, I, I guess my point is we don't need a config file, right? Cause we're mm -hmm. configuring everything via the Docker images. So, um, I think if we say, don't mm -hmm. look for it, it's not going to barf. That's a good. Oh, sign silent configuration. Okay. We're in the app though. Okay. We're getting so very that close. Couldn't get to the database. Okay. Okay. Basically, so and, and also we don't, so what, uh, what's the default database username and password? Cause we need to provide those so that it can create the database in that auth dash DB. Yeah. And I was, I was trying to, so I know, and actually this was one of the places I was confused. So maybe this is, um, this could be the, um, cause I never mess around with, with Postgres. Um, I was a little confused why there's both the root and the individual. I guess the individual. So is this like the root password for Postgres as a service? And then each individual database has its own username, password. Yeah. So what we do is, is we're, uh, FusionAuth is smart enough that if it sees like an uninitialized database at that database URL, it will try to connect as the root user, or if it, if it doesn't find the database at all, it'll try to connect as that root user, create the database, grant the privileges on the database underscore username user, grant privileges to the database underscore username user to that database and then it will not use that root username and password anymore okay so it's basically just trying to set up the database what i think is probably so i my guess is that we're not even able to connect um to the database that are because i uh, we were talking about this earlier i was concerned about this port strengths we're not right. actually and actually i bet we can see um, if we just looked at what Docker containers are running, we could see what port that auth DB, um, yeah. So this is like our auth DB and Aaron said Lando info is the command you want to run. Yeah. That's probably a better way to do this. Stay, stay in the, the stay in Lando. Lando. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Aaron. Keep me true <laughs> to myself, which we could see, we could see back there though. Um, and we'll, we should see here as well. Postgres. Yeah. Five, four, three, two. So the interesting, that is actually the, the Why does it say port. forward? Uh, is that not forwarded to the host system when it says not forwarded on yeah. that external connection? Okay, exactly. Cool. Yeah. But it should be, uh, it's interesting. This actually looks correct. Our, um, the host should be off DB like we expected port should be five, four, three, two. Um, says no password. no password. Oh, that's right. Actually. Yeah. I do remember seeing that on the, the Lando docs. This is where you got to mm. read, read your docs. It should be just a blank password for the root password for Postgres. Right. Let's see our configuration. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the doc says no password, but that actually means no password. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good docs. Um, although I don't know how else I would denote update that. Um, so yeah, so I'm actually not sure if I just put in a blank, is that going to work? So I'm looking at, uh, there was an open bug in 2019 about this and I'm, looks like it was resolved. So it should work. Okay. Let's try that. Um, blank. I'm, I, I just feel weird having a blank key in a in a YAML file. I'm like curious if that right. just errors. Yeah. Let's see if it works. Makes me feel iffy. <laughs> May I also say it is so cool to have, um, to have you, Aaron. I know Dustin was in here earlier. Um, I don't know if it's, I, I uh, B Martinez. I, I don't think, I don't think we've met, but it's cool to have you here as well. It's great having you all, um, watching and commenting because that is how we all learn. I'm learning. Oh, I'm still here. Okay. Let's actually take a, well, I wonder if we, no, it's not going to tell us anything more probably. Um, do you want to look at the, the fusion off logs and see what it says? That's what I was thinking. Um, just to see if there's something extra there. Yeah, it's not really saying. Oh, well, we are seeing 
Oh no, these are just the override. Um, is it still the same error about like not being able to connect? Okay, good. Here, check that the host name and port are correct. Okay, so we it does look like we are. Maybe we should do. Maybe we should just SSH into this container and see um, if we can like ping. Sure. Um, uh, oops. Like what if we just did something like ping? Um, my, I don't even remember how if ping does. Oh, we don't have this. This it doesn't have that. I wonder if. Um, yeah. Wonder if it has like a like a curl info. I think it's a pretty stripped image. Right. We could install it on there, but that's maybe a little more worth than it's worth. Um, we do, I mean, it's sure it has the, it has some sort of PG SQL. Uh, no, it uses like the Java um, okay. Postgres driver, so it's not going to use. Um, so hmm. That's not going to work. Um, Can you scroll up real quick? I just want to see the full error message. So it's trying to get to auth dash DB. Um, connections refused. Do we need to put the network in the, does it need to, does let's, the Docker Compose like need to have a network specified? Let's try that. Cause I know that's something I saw in some of the samples in our Compose. Um, if it's not on the docs page, I think I saw in some of the samples that we have. Um, yeah, I see networks, my network. This and this is where this may be where we get some. Is my network like the default Lando network? That's what I don't know. Yeah, like this okay. is where this is where, whatever I find out about this needs to go in here um, because that's yeah, this is where the documentation is too vague. Um, my network. I don't think there's anything else about networking in here. Um, and I don't think we have a dedicated networking. Well, actually, let's see if there's something in our networking docs that might help us here. I mean, so you could look at the Docker network, right? And see what that does. Uh, sorry, what? We could look at the doc. We could use Docker's network command to like mm -hmm. look at the Docker network that was set up. Yeah, that's a good point. Is it just like Docker? I actually haven't used network. I always network. <laughs> Google it. Yeah, just list. The LS. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Our Fusion Auth Compose DB. Interesting. Um, Fusion Auth default. So I wonder whether everything gets put into its own network by default, and we need to like specify that. I. I a little uh yeah it's funny because like reading the networking docs here compare it's added by hmm. see that's like yeah. this piece of it makes me feel like what we're doing should work <laughs> yeah um but should not need to specify okay thanks aaron um yeah so I wonder what we're do we want to like change the host name to be auth db dot app dot internal instead of the auth db? Um so I change the database URL to be that dot internal because that's what oh the, 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 the Docker host right. internal. Well the network if you go back to the network apps or the network page, sorry, the oh, page like this looking at. Yeah, that oh no, sorry, the documentation you were just looking at. Oh, uh, let's see here. There we are. So it says automatic host names, and it says every service, oh, Lando info again, um, has service.app.internal. And so mm. we might want to have that be the actual host name rather than auth db. Yeah, 
yeah, let's let's try that. That's good reading. Let's see here. Oh, and the, well, okay. Let's see. Let's see. So it doesn't have a host. Oh, host oh here we go. Right there. Oh, let's do that. Yeah. Let's oh man, yeah. this works. <laughs> I'm gonna be excited. I'm impressed at, at your uh, fortitude here. I mean, this is a. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. And I'm wondering if we're gonna need the port in that case. Well, yeah, let's let's try it out. We'll try it with and without. That's a good point. Maybe proxies it. Yeah. Definitely high point so far was seeing the load page, even though it was an error. It's like, okay, we got to the app that, that even with that, like that was a good, even if this is like us, you know, 50 feet from the summit and the weather's just too bad. We got to turn around. Um, I'm happy we made it to the, the pass and like got the, the panoramic view. Um, totally. okay. Let's see here. Oh, no, no, same thing. Let's look at the logs and make sure it's the same thing, but cause it could be that if we're starting to fail on the password or something, maybe it'll give us something different. Um, yeah. but maybe we'll try it without the port. Um, where's the text I'm looking for? Connection attempt fail right up there towards the top. Oh, is it? Okay. Same one. Uh, I believe so. Uh, I know wait, scroll down. It said unknown host exception. Unknown host exception. If you scroll down a little bit more. Okay. There little, we go. A little more. Hmm. Do we see that previously? I don't remember. Let's see if we can if we can get to our old output. Yeah, here we go. Um, I don't think we did because that's the only instance of. It says that it was refused there. So yeah. um, maybe maybe the answer is just try auth db with no auth dash db with no uh, port. Yeah. Um, for a different flavor here. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. No, no. I want to run a rebuild here. This is when I need to have the guitar. A lot of times for live streams, I'll do, I'll start with a song um, and uh, start and end with a song. And uh, if I have long, long loads and things. Ah, we just didn't need the port. Nice. That was it. Okay. So it's the magic of like the, all that port mapping happens. And we were trying to be too smart for ourselves, basically. Yeah. We were cool. overthinking it. Cool. Classic cool. synth. <laughs> well, that's cool. Okay. Well, uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, depending on how much time you have, Dan, uh, I'm down to see if we can just get this thing to talk. Yeah. I think, uh, the only thing I would add, and I'll drop a link in the, um, uh, the chat is if you're using fusion auth for reals, there's actually a piece of system called, um, a piece of configuration called kickstart. Yeah. Which actually reads from a file and like, we'll let you skip this screen and configure fusion auth with like a, a couple of users and an application or 10 applications. Um, so I'll drop the links in, but let's just go through this manually right now. Okay. Let me get rid of some tabs too. So we don't trip over ourselves too bad. Um, our network, get rid of tabs, get rid of more tabs, get rid of more tabs. I think we're good. Okay. Um, so this is our, our now running in the Landoized version and this should be. So we still need to create an API key and uh, that's and right. An application, right? Yep. And, and update those in variables. 
Um, correct. So let's create a new application. Oops. There we go. Let's save that. Great. And we'll need this ID in our M file. Oops. Don't change that. No, don't change that. <laughs> um, we need this in our N file, app ID. Let's save that. Um, and then we need to create our API key, which was in system. Yep. Uh, go to settings. 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 API key. Add. Um, and that can be blank. We don't really need anything else. So that should be good. And I'm going to copy this over to our API key. Cool. Um, base URL should actually just be, now we can actually just put um, our... It should be just fusion off, right? And it probably won't need the 9011 either. Yeah. From what we discovered, um, I'm interested to see if, it, like, yeah, if we were, we should be using the, in, I think we should be using the internal name, um, or if we should be using the ex external name. But I, I guess what we found out from the other one is we should be using the internal name. Um, yep. Okay, and now I guess we could do a test and see. Um, I don't. I still don't. I, I'm going to do this just for my own sanity, um, mm -hmm. and I want to see if M file updates. I don't think it's going to update. I think this is gonna, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Let's do a rebuild. Sweet, I'm gonna rebuild this. I'm working on a kickstart file right now. That we might be able to use. Oh, cool! Just shove it in there. It's uh, you basically have to have it mount. You basically have to have a place for it in your local file system, and you have mm -hmm. to point to it in an environment variable. But everything else should work. Okay. He says gl glibly, everything else <laughs> should work. There is, you know, it's all magic, right? Oh, uh, maybe it's curious to see. Nope, it's the only user we have. Hmm, I wonder what's going wrong. Interesting. Okay, well, this is where like setting the um the debug switch might be helpful. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to do that when I was setting that up. That's in the app. Uh, yeah, applications. That's just right here. Debug enabled. And I think you probably want to do that. And then also you might want to go under security maybe? In like settings or? Sorry, no, under the apps, there's a security oh, tab. Oh, gotcha. Now I just want to say, uh... nope, okay, I was wrong. There's no other, uh, no debug setting here for this particular tab, so, okay. And is that going to just surface uh, more in the, the logs? Yeah, if you go log? to system event log, in theory, it will surface more. It depends on kind of the path of the code through, but. I'm curious to see, too. It could just be that um, I feel like the most likely explanation here is just that our URL isn't correct um, for referencing this thing right now, but let's find out. You mean from Lando to FusionOff is incorrect? The yeah from the Laravel app, um, yeah basically oh, yeah, apps sorry yeah I'm sorry yeah the Laravel app um, but let's see yeah because we're not seeing anything registered okay. in the event log so I'm guessing there's just a networking error there um, so I'm gonna try actually as the base URL I'm wondering if we should actually um, use this this URL. sure. I'm just going to try that. Oh.
cool. Okay. Now let's go back to our app and see if something happens. Return to register. There we go. Okay, that worked. All or right. Presumably okay, worked. so it's just a networking thing again. It's always the network. It's always the network. Interesting. I'm not seeing anything in the event logs, but I bet. Yep. I, th yeah. I think it depends on how. I haven't looked at this code for a while, so I'm not sure that it's maybe not using the OAuth. It's using, we have a direct API you can use to log people in and out, register people, and I think it may be using that. Gotcha. Okay, sweet. Oh. Look at that. We made it. How's the Thanks, view from the Evan. top? <laughs> Um, oh, thank yeah, you. So yeah. do you want, do you want to try one more thing and do the kickstart or yeah. actually it is 1229. Um, maybe that's next time. Um, yes. Yeah, so send over the kickstart file. Um, yeah, we'll I, love I did it in the chat, uh, our, into our host only chat. So Perfect. it's there. Um, but, uh, it might need to be tweaked a little bit, but I think that'd be cool. Cause then fusion off is set up and you're good to go. You don't need to like manually accept the license or anything like that. And you can configure applications and, and whatnot. So and API keys. So great. Okay. Yeah. And what, what I'm going to do, um, is I'm going to, now that we've gone through the, what, almost two hours of, of getting it all, um, all worked out through the pain, the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, I'm going to condense all those blood, sweat, and tears into a nice sticky juice that's sweet to consume. Um, <laughs> and probably do like a less than half an hour video, um, showing basically showing this setup, um, going through it step-by-step, uh, and just kind of explaining the the elements of the the composed service as well. So um, people and the networking seems like that's a huge place where a little bit of documentation would have helped us a ton, right? Right. Like even just the stuff about like don't use the port number or use the port number here, not there, and yeah, cool. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. I think uh yeah, the lessons learned here will be applied very quickly. <laughs> awesome. Um, Alex, this is so much fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan, really for showing it. up. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Fusion Off, uh, for, for sponsoring this and just sponsoring Lando in general. Uh, really great tool. Uh, it's been fun getting a chance to check it out. Uh, awesome. Great. All right. Well, uh, say bye to everyone out there in streaming land. Thanks for watching. And um, definitely Wait, Don't sign... we have to play the guitar or something real quick? I, I do, but my headphones can't reach that far. <laughs> I should have. I Yeah, I did not plan ahead for this one. Poor planning. Poor planning. Next yeah. video. More. So much fun. Thank mm -hmm. you. See you guys.